YouTube team keep it clean uh, we have officially reached that season where everybody starts freaking out when they see these type of lists um, and it, it's no surprise that a lot of people are scared they're getting a little worried and I can understand because with Ravens fans last year emotionally scarred so many Ravens fans so now when a lot of us see a list like this uh, it, it can kind of just bring up bad memories and painful memories and, and it can just make your stomach turn a little bit But I'm here to tell you, it's okay It's okay Now if it's week one <laughs> Then there's a reason to freak out But going into training camp, it's alright Now, um, let's just go over the list And then we'll talk about what it means for these players um, The Ravens, they put six players on the physically unable to perform list. One, J.K. Dobbins, who, <laughs> J.K. got a lot, a lot to prove right now, man. Especially guy he came on Twitter though, the other day going off on Ian Rappaport talking about I'm tired of being quiet. I might not even start on a PUP list. Now J.K. is starting on a PUP list, but it's okay. He can come off at any day, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but let's go through the list first. Anyway, J.K. Dobbins is on the PUP list. Gus Edwards is on the PUP list. Ronnie Stanley, Tyus Bowser, Marcus Peters, and Ardarius Washington. Now, uh, with J.K. Dobbins, we remember him. It was on the, the first drive of the last preseason game. The first time the offensive line was all together, and that was just a sign, a sign to come. That the offensive line was going to be bad because <laughs> it was rough. It was on a screenplay. And it's like, man, we never run screenplays. And then when we finally run a screenplay, boom. Bradley Bozeman, he missed a block. Then J.K. got everything tore up. That was the end of his season before it even began. Gus Edwards, um, he was, it was training camp. They said he was just going through a normal routine. Then all of a sudden, snap, crackle, and pop. And that was it for him. That, that was the end of his season. Uh, Ronnie Stanley, he made it through the, the, the training camp. He made it through preseason. Even made it through the first game. Didn't look so good in that first game against the Raiders, but he made it through. And then they realized during the game, after the game, like, oh, yeah, this, this dude, he, he wasn't ready yet. He wasn't ready yet. And then on top of that, he, he kind of waited a little bit because he wanted to rehab instead of trying to have another surgery again. But the rehab, it just it wouldn't have healed everything correctly. And they were just like, you know what, let's just surgery it is. Let's just get it cleaned up, get it corrected. So hopefully for the following season, he'll be good to go. And that's what we're still hoping for for him. Tyus Bowser. Oh, man. Tyus Bowser literally made it through the whole season healthy. After he watching all his boys just fall game after game after game after game after game. And then on top of that, he made it through a 16-game schedule healthy. But they added a 17th game. So he was in the 17th game with a schedule and he was healthy then. Boom. Against the Steelers. Towards Achilles. Last game of the season. I was like, man, I, I, ooh, I felt so bad for him, man. Uh, Marcus Peters. His was the same day as Gus Edwards always tell people. I, I, you got to remember where you were. When you got that announcement that Marcus Peters and Gus, because it was both of them at the same time, same report, same announcement, same confirmation that both Marcus Peters and Gus Edwards were going to be out for the season. And it was just that was such a sad day. And I, I always remember the, the press conference that Marcus Peters had either that same day earlier in the day or the day before. And it was a very emotional press conference that just made you love Marcus Peters that much more. Uh, and then uh, Darius Washington. He was in a few games during the season, I believe, and then he broke his foot like out of nowhere, and that ended his season. It ended his season. So these guys each had their own story uh, for how everything ended. Um, some got to play a little bit during the season, uh, and some didn't. Um, but like I said, everybody got, had their own story. Um, but them starting on the physically unable to perform list, what does that mean? Well... It means that they just can't practice right now because, again, training camp is where it gets physical, but they just can't practice right now until they can pass a physical. Now, um, for the, the physically unable to perform this, so nobody gets it twisted or confused or anything like that. It's the training camp version of the physically unable to perform list is different from the regular season version. With the regular season version of the PUP list, you have to miss at least six games. If they place you on the pup list, 
then you miss at least you have to miss at least six games, and that's whether you're healthy or not. Say, for instance, you healthy after two or three games. After two or three games, you're ready to come back on the field. Nope, you still got to miss three more because for pup list, you can miss a minimum. Um, but once those six games are up, then it's decision time. When it's decision time for the team to either bring you back to the active roster, and you, of course, have 21 days from when you're healthy to be activated to the, to the roster, um, or if you're not healthy enough, if you can't go back to the active roster, then you go on injury reserve, and you can, that's not the injury reserve you can come back from. Your season is officially over. So after the six weeks, after you miss those six weeks, you either come back on the active roster or you miss the rest of the season. It's one or the other. There is no in-between at all. But that's for during the regular season. Now, the pup list during the off-season, during training camp and whatnot, you can be on a pup list today, and you can pass a physical tomorrow and come off. So this is more so as more like a precaution. Because, uh, again, these, are guys, these guys, they uh, had to report to the building yesterday. They had to all be back yesterday. So this is just really a, a formality. Um, now, all of these guys are guys, uh, maybe all Darius Washington in the future, but my, so minus him. But these are all significant players for the Ravens, as you all already know. Like, these are difference make, big-time difference makers for the Ravens. They're starting running backs, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. Their starting left tackle, who, if Ronnie Stanley is healthy this year, he literally changes everything for the Ravens on offense and defense. Because with a better offensive line, that means your offense is better. Lamar will have time. The running backs have time. The receivers have some time to get open. He impacts everything. The offensive line, the quality of the offensive line is that much better. Offense is on the field. For longer drives, they have a higher chance of scoring. So that makes it easier for the defense for when they play defense. So they, it, just, it just makes everything easier. Um, Marcus Peters, of course, oh gosh, like, yeah, we miss him so bad. Marlon Humphrey missed him so bad. Last year was rough for Marlon Humphrey. There were a lot of people who felt like Marlon Humphrey was injured even before he uh, went out in that Steelers game. A lot of people felt like Marlon Humphrey was injured from week one of the season. Um, cause he just, they said he looked off, but I, I think that, uh, his heart was hurting cause he didn't have his guy opposite of him, uh, that being Marcus Peters. Um, so anyway, and then of course, Ardarius Washington looks to provide, uh, some good depth to the Baltimore Ravens, uh, in that secondary. Um, but yeah, so we're going to see. But again, this is nothing to freak out about. It's nothing to be worried about. It's nothing to be like, oh, man. And again, I understand why people are like that, especially because this is the first injury report of the offseason, of tra before training camp. This is the first injury report. Yeah, I just realized that. So I, I can understand. I sympathize for people that are freaking out. But I'm here to let you know, again, you don't need to. It, it's, it's OK. It is super, super early. Training camp hasn't even started yet. It's, it's getting ready to start real soon, but it hasn't even started yet. Um, so we will continue to monitor all of these guys and just really the whole team uh, as we get closer and closer to the preseason. And then, of course, as we get closer and closer uh, to the regular season, because it'll really be here before you know it. This off season is over. And like I always say, it went way too fast. It went way too fast. But hey, we're here now. So that work is going to be, everybody got to have their work cut out for them. Um, everybody going to, uh, it's time. It's time. Because this is where the, 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 the roster gets made. This is sort of that shift from, oh, yeah, we know the guys on our team and whatnot. These are, hey, these are some guys that could battle it out for different positions. No, to where it's on now. So it's real. Uh, team keep it clean i appreciate y'all love y'all thank you for supporting as always and just like those six guys are when it comes to being a part of training camp for now i'm out <laughs>